Hi everyone, it's Rudy at Clodden Painting Studio. Um, in today's video, I'm going to do a comparison between uh, Citadel Shades, Army Painter Tones, and Vallejo Game Color Washes. Um, I do apologise, I've got a bit of a sore throat at the moment, so if I do sound a bit croaky, um, we'll just have to look past it. So if you've been watching my recent videos, I've been looking at the different manufacturers and their washes and what they look like shading uh, Napoleonic figures. Um, I have been doing a little bit of comparison. I've looked at um, Army Painter versus Citadel before, um, old Army Painter versus new Army Painter, um, and also at Coat de Arms. Um, but I haven't done a comparison with the Vallejo game color washes, so you'll get to see them in this video. You won't see the coat d'arms washes in this video. I don't recommend them. They're not very successful. And um, you also won't see the Vallejo wash FX range or um, dip versions of the game color formulas. Please look at the Vallejo video if you want to see the subtle differences there. Um, but I think that the game color washes out the uh, dropper bottles are comparable with the uh, Army Painter and GW. The aim of this project has been to find a wash that straight out of the bottle can be applied to Napoleonic figures um, to give them a game ready finish and um, that doesn't really require any um, touching up of the base colors or highlighting for the finished on mass effect. I've been using French in great coats because they're quite simple to paint up. Um, all the models I've used have had the same base colors applied. Um, they're all plastic, some are Warlord, some are Perry, some are Victrix. All the base color paints will be listed in the description and you can see an example of an unwashed figure in the picture here. I'll include that model alongside all the washed figures so you can see the effects that the various washes and shades have um, on the model. Right, without further ado, we'll look at some of the um, dark uh, black washes and see how they look. From left to right, as we look at the image, we have a model prepared with Army Painter Dark Tone, the unwashed model, then a model with GW Nalm Oil, and finally a model with Vallejo uh, game color black wash. Um, I think game color black wash um, leaves a bit of, of a dirty appearance in comparison to the others um, and the null oil leaves really uh, dark staining. The dark tone um, is actually quite a subtle stain in comparison and I think of the three uh, washes it's the one that's going to need the least uh, tidying up with the base colors um, for a, a battle ready finish. I'd be quite happy throwing that one into a battalion of 24 or more figures um, and letting the mass effect um, carry the day. On to the dark brown washes. From left of the image we've got Army Painter Strong Tone, the unwashed model, then GW Agrax Earthshade, and finally Vallejo Game Colour uh, Umber Wash. I think that the Agrax Earthshade um, stains the base colours the most. It's quite a warm brown and if you look at the white straps, white trousers, they really are um, much more brown uh, than the other models. I think that the uh, umber um, has a nice effect in the recesses um, but I think it leaves a bit of a messier effect than the strong tone. Um, once again I think that the Army Painter strong tone um, is my favourite of these three as it was with the sort of black washes. I think you could throw that guy into a, a unit and it would look great from a distance. Now we have sepia tones. Um, Army Painter sepia on the left, unwashed model, uh, GW Seraphin sepia, and then Vallejo Game Color uh, sepia wash on the right of the image as we look at it. Um, I think that the GW wash um, is probably my favorite out of these ones. Um, if you look at both the Army Painter and Vallejo, um, they've stained the model, especially the coat, quite a yellow shade, um, whereas the GW wash clings much more to the recesses um, and doesn't affect the base colours as much. 
So I think with the view of just wanting um, shading applied, it's probably the superior choice here. Um, that said, I think that um, this sort of yellowy color is not great for um, the metallics or the, the darker browns. And I'd probably be erring towards strong tone or dark tone um, by the army painter if I wanted um, a wash that's going to look good from distance and affect the colors the way I want it to look. Now, the Army Painter uh, provides a range of washes which sort of fall into this kind of yellowy-brown um, range. Um, I've left the uh, Vallejo Sepia, uh, GW Surf and Sepia, um, in the image towards the, the right as you look at it. Um, but from the left, we have Army Painter Rust Tone, Army Painter uh, Soft Tone, Army Painter Light Tone, then the Army Painter Sepia Tone that we've seen already and the unwashed model. Um, there's not a huge difference uh, between um, these shades. I think that the uh, soft tone has less of an effect overall on the, the base colours. Um, it's similar to the light tone in that regard and certainly is a lot less yellowing um, than the sepia tone. Um, the rust tone um, is a bit stronger, it's a bit browner. Again, though, I don't think these colours are a great fit for uh, the Napoleonic models in the grey greatcoats. So to sum up, um, I've plucked out my um, favourites from uh, the three companies um, and are displaying them here all together. So left of the image, we've got Army Painter Strong Tone, then Dark Tone, the Unwashed Model, uh, Games Workshop Null and Oil and uh, Vallejo Umber. Um, as I discussed previously, um, I think that the uh, Iron Painter Strong Tone and Dark Tone are probably my um, favourites. Um, I prefer Dark Tone over Null and Oil in a direct comparison of the black or dark washes, and I prefer Strong Tone over Umber in a direct comparison of the dark brown washes. Um, I think both these colours are appropriate for um, Napoleonic figures. They give good shading in the recesses which will help um, the different materials show um, to stand out from each other at a distance. That's useful around the straps especially. It's also more effective for shading um, dark colours like the metal um, and the wood than your lighter uh, sepia tones. I think of strong tone, dark tone. Um, dark tone is probably my favourite I think it does less altering of the base colours than the strong tone does and that leaves the model a little bit cleaner, which I prefer. Some people may like the sort of dirty, muddy look um, that you get with the dark brown washes like strong tone um, and you could argue that it's a more um, perhaps realistic look of a soldier on a battlefield. If I want to be critical of um, black and dark brown um, washes is that they aren't so good uh, for skin tones, especially black tones. Um, the You're much better with a, a more complementary colour, um, a light brown or, or a specific flesh wash which has um, some red or, or purple through it as well. I think that the um, headgear cover where I've used a, an off-white um, for the, the shackle cover if you look at the model that's been done with null and oil, um, it looks quite muddy. Again, a lighter brown um, sepia colour might be more effective there. Um, the objective of this though is to find a shade that does all over the model um, for speed purposes. Um, but of course taking your time and using varying shades could improve the overall result on your figures. A final bit on price. Um, I've done some rough sums. Uh, the Army Painter um, wash around about 16 pence a milliliter. Game Color um, about 15 pence, 14 pence a milliliter. Um, Games Workshop around about 26, uh, 25, 26 pence a milliliter. So Games Workshop washes are considerably more expensive um, and I don't necessarily think the results are um, any better than the alternatives. Okay, um, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for uh, listening to me waffle on about washes. Um, plenty of good options out there, um, but I think I'm going to be sticking with Army Painter 
for the foreseeable. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.